so we should be there we go all right got it there we are um and yes i would like on the record to uh, to say thank you to everybody um particularly business people um who don't have the time that i do for uh, turning up this morning um it does take time out of your day but i i think it's um it's important and um thank you very much um and with that uh, i think uh, i'd like to uh, call for the uh, review and approval of the agenda you've all had the agenda circulated any comments additions um suggestions seeing none could i get a motion to approve please Diana, thank you. Seconded by Alyssa. All in favor? Carried. And um, unanimously. And on to item three, which is a review and approval of January 13 minutes. We, we didn't have a meeting last month. Um, again, these were issued, thank you, Anna, along with the agenda, and look through. There's a couple of items arising from those, but I think they'll be covered as we go through. Um, did anybody have any, um, any particular comments that they see out of those minutes, changes, omissions, things we missed? You know, special moments, no, um, that weren't, weren't there. All right, could I again, could I get a, a motion to receive and approve those minutes, please? Rod, thank you. A second? Someone? Oh, thank you, Diana. And um, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you very much. Um, and on to referrals from council. Uh, at the last meeting, we, we decided I'm sorry, Peter. Can we just skip over two agenda items, the uh, number four? Ah, then. number four, my apologies. Yeah. And you said two agenda items? I've only got the BIA development manager. Number five is discussion of vacancies and election of chair. Ah, dear. The amended agenda. Yes, my apologies. Um, let's go to number four, introduction of the BIA business development manager. And... Um, Although I see two people from the BIA here, I, I think, um, are, we, are we going to have Sydney BIA down here? Yes, I think, we, are you introducing us here this morning, Morgan? Morgan, maybe not. Natalie, um, it looks like you're gonna to have to introduce yourself. Right. Oh, that's totally fine. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. It's really nice to e meet you all today as everything seems to be done at the moment. Um, my name is Natalie Bobrowich and I just joined on with the BIA. This week is actually my first full week. Um, so coming from Beacon Community Services and um, I'm really excited about the role. So the last couple of weeks, I've just spent time kind of digging into what the BIA is and the function and how I can best support the businesses. Um, I've got lots of new ideas and I just see so many great opportunities um, and I'm just really excited to be working with two great teams, both at the town and at the, the BIA. So, um, yeah, my background is in hospitality and recreation and then I've just come from employment services um, as well. I've had my own business in the past, so I think that, you know, I, I come with that um, insight and perspective as a business owner. Um, and you know, are familiar and can relate to a lot of the challenges that come up within owning a business. So um, right now I'm just in the, in the process of reaching out to a lot of local business owners and I'm just like focusing on getting to know people and you know their unique challenges and opportunities and how I can best support them through the BIA. So yeah, that's uh, kind of the beginning part of my role here. And, Thank you. We uh, good in, uh, questions or, or welcomes or whatever from uh, from members for for Natalie. Uh, welcome, Natalie, from me. Um, okay. I'm uh, representing the well the tourism um, sector, but from the Shaw Center for the Sailor Sea. Oh, awesome! Thank you. Good to meet you. There you are. And uh, well, welcome from me. Um, an interesting accent. Can I ask where from? 
Yes, actually Manchester. <laughs> no, uh, West I, I, I was thinking. I was thinking more specifically. Oh, Stockport. <laughs> okay. Oh. <clears throat> How about you? Uh, about um, I think eight miles from Stockport. I'm 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 a hail person, so oh. yeah, oh. there we go. Uh, we could have the whole meetings with strong accents if we wanted to, but we'll we'll try and decline that. Uh, <laughs> see where we go. But welcome. I'm delighted to work with you and and uh, look forward to exchanging information and uh, and going forward. Um, yeah. Uh, an, an interesting act to follow, and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, but I'm sure with uh, with Morgan's assistance, she'll do very well here. So there we go. Thank you. Um, can we move then to the new item five, if I may, um, which should be the question of the chair. And um, uh, Peter, would you like to comment on that? Or? Well, I guess. Um... To start things off, uh, everyone is, is, I'm sure, aware that the town advertised for the vacant positions on uh, this committee and other town committees. And that uh, advertisement closed several weeks ago. Um, there was an announcement of an appointment to the, um, the uh, VAA noise uh, consultative committee, but there were no appointments made to this committee. And uh, I guess, um, you know, we've already advertised a couple of times. We haven't found people interested in those positions. Uh, the town is not advertising uh, again. Uh, I, I guess the feeling was that it, it what wouldn't be worthwhile. So um, the committee membership stands at the eight members that, uh, that you currently have. And uh, the last meeting, there was some discussion of, uh, about electing a chair, um, but uh, there was a, a, a bare quorum present and uh, there weren't any volunteers uh, to serve as chair. I think we're looking at something similar today. And uh, uh, there needs to be, I guess, a bit of discussion about um, what to do about the vacancies, the election of the chair, uh, even the um, future of the committee. Uh, it may be something you want to leave to later in the meeting, but um, it's something that uh, the committee should discuss. And I don't really have anything more to suggest. Um, if uh, you know, uh, where things sit at the moment, um, the vice chair was elected, uh, David Calvary, and in the absence of the chair, uh, he's running the meetings, and it will continue that way until a chair is elected. Um, anybody uh, have any immediate comments to uh, what Councillor Wainwright has said? Um, please feel free. Otherwise, as he suggests, maybe I could suggest we, um, we go through the remainder of the meeting, um, bear his comments in mind, and perhaps uh, address this at the end of the meeting, um, which would give members at least a chance to um, listen to the SBIA's development report comments and, and some follow-up from that. Um, hear a little about the economic development strategy, uh, hear some comments from, from other members, and, uh, and then perhaps, you know, with, with that in mind, uh, take up that question as to what we do uh, towards the end. Um, would anybody feel that's a reasonable approach? Or let's say this way, would anybody feel that's not a reasonable approach? I'm seeing just smiling faces here, so um, um, all right, we'll um, we'll take that as a given and 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 do that at the, at the end. We'll uh, we'll make that, if you like, the new nine on our uh, our agenda. Um, 
given that, uh, refer us from council and, and the SBI's business development report. Um, a very comprehensive document and, and we, we gave everybody a, a chance to, uh, to take some time and have a read through uh, and to make some comments. Um, I, I'd like, maybe I'll go around and, and just see, uh, and I'll take it with the usual Zoom protocol and just see if there are comments, etc. Alyssa, would you have anything to, uh, to bring from this? The report was excellent. I did have a couple of questions about the key highlights on page two, specifically the active participant in 23 community and such organizations. I'm more curious as to what role Shannon plays on those and then what value some of those add. I was confused about what some of them even were and I could have taken the time to Google each one, but um, as you say, we're all quite busy. So that was my only comment. Okay. Um, Natalie, it's probably unfair to ask you to comment on that. Morgan, would you like to, to give some thoughts on that? We're going to put you on the spot here, Morgan. Right. Right. Fair warning. Right. <laughs> I'm happy to answer. Um, so with regards to those um, affiliations that Shannon was um, participating in, it was, a, it was definitely a variety. So really what we were working to do um, through the first year of, of um, the contract was uh, make some inroads with organizations, et cetera, that we hadn't been in connection with before. Um, and it kind of was two, a twofold approach. Obviously, uh, we wanted to ensure that we were on top of um, our game in terms of receiving information, but we also wanted to ensure that Sydney was being highlighted uh, well and appropriately um, kind of across the board in, in those areas that are listed in the report. So that's the short of it. Were there any um, specific ones that you had questions about, Alyssa, or just from a general sense? Uh, mostly general, but uh, what, like local BC, um, the city of Terrace economic development, just some of these things I, I was just confused by, I guess. That's oh, all. Yeah. yeah. So some of it was just um, gathering information. So as we would see programs being rolled out by other communities or communities that were being um, similarly um, impacted as Sydney was, we would reach out to them to have correspondence and find out about sort of what they were doing to mitigate um, COVID as it as it had been and as it was continuing to be. So, um, yeah, it was it was some of it was um, information seeking, some of it was information sharing, um, but it was really just trying to ensure that we had all the everything that we needed on our end to be putting our best foot forward from a COVID response. Thank you for that, Kerry. Uh, you're my next one round going. Oh, my screen just jumped, so there you go. Would you, any comments from yourself, questions? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm relatively new to this committee, obviously, but um, representing the home-based business is looking through the lens of a home-based business. Um, I, I would have loved to have seen just a little bit more of a focus on some of the resources for home-based businesses outside of the SBIA. Um, um, anecdotally, what I'm hearing from just some people who own home-based businesses, contractors, things like that, um, is a desire to have more, you know, shared resources, um, a variety of shared office spaces to choose from, networking events and the like that are, um, you know, focused on the people who are working from home, but want to have more of a shared experience within the community as well. So just, um, Putting that out there is a question as to whether we're factoring in businesses that aren't um, don't have commercial storefronts, so on and so forth. Okay, thank you. Any any thoughts, uh, Morgan? Uh, I think those are excellent points. Hmm. Um, certainly, something that as Natalie gets going in her role, we can. Um, it will be nice to have a contact in terms of receiving that information. Sometimes it's hard. Everybody's so busy that we put all of this information out there and it's kind of, it's, it's making that final connection piece that's difficult. So 
um, yeah, we would love to chat further on all the resources that have been developed so far, what, um, what is needed from a home-based business perspective, and then, of course, uh, what, the best, what the best way to get that information into the hands that need it is. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Deanna, you've now jumped into the, the spot. Right. Into the queue? Okay. Thank you, David. Um, I read the report and I watched the town, the recording of the report presentation and the questions in the town council meeting. Um, I thought the, uh, the questions were very thorough. Um, there were not a lot of uh, questions certainly left in my mind by the time I finished watching that. It did clarify a few things for me and, and I thought uh, Shannon did a, a great job of explaining um, and just talking about some of the, the work that went into this that she had done over the past year and, and so on. So I, I found that really helpful and I felt um, quite satisfied um, having watched that. So that, that was really good. Thank you. And Rod, you're, you're, let's say last, but certainly never least. All right, um, <laughs> please. Uh, yeah, just a couple comments one just uh, I just wanted to go back to what uh, what Alyssa was mentioning about the list of businesses uh, or organizations that were um, actively um, involved with or things things like that it's just uh, I noticed that it uh, she mentioned the uh, the Peninsula Chamber of Commerce um, I'm a board member of, of that as well and so um, I don't recall any uh, that there was a lot of active involvement that being said the response was that it could have been just, um, uh, seeking in information through uh, uh, to the chamber and the executive, um, the uh, the um, the uh, staff could have provided information. So it just may have it may have been just worded a little differently the, as opposed to being active involvement. Uh, it could be just organizations that were contacted or information was shared, things like that. So that was that. Uh, other than that, I it, what what I found enlightening was all of the resources that are actually out there and available. I mean, that's stuff that I knew nothing about uh, before reading this. So I, I I think that's really valuable information. Um, comment in response, Morgan. Uh, some any thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. I've just been making notes as we go here. So I think that that's that's valuable in terms of. Um, just the language that's used in the reporting style. So I've made note of that. Um, and again, yeah, certainly going through the list, it's, uh, it was, we were fortunate because the Chamber of Commerce, the proximity to the Chamber um, is close and we were able to work with Al, um, what we felt was closely, but I know that he's got a lot on his on the go as he started out in his position last spring. So. Um, we're hopeful that as we go into 2022, that that can be, that we can see further collaboration there. Um, Al being the Chamber of Commerce Executive Director for those, uh, is he on the call right now? Um, he's not in today, so oh, okay. he's, yeah. He's, I don't want to miss him. I can only see a few of you and I don't know. <laughs> there, are, there are only a few of us. Um, okay. Um, anyway, yeah, so it's, uh, I, um, we anticipate and hope for, for uh, more collaboration and, and a variety of elements with the chamber moving into 2022 and we're excited. We know that the AGM for the chamber is coming up at the end of uh, March. So excited to hear about the plans in progress there. So um, yeah, certainly from, from this end, if there's any thoughts or any um, suggestions for other connections that can be made, we're, we're all ears on this end. And I know Natalie's um, eager to continue these connections and continue learning. So much of it is, is um, we can really learn from each other um, regarding communities. So um, when we, we keep our eyes very open to what other communities are doing as we recover from COVID or as we continue through this process that is COVID. Um, so we're all we're always open to suggestions on that front, and I will just again echo the biggest. I think um, 
you know, the biggest challenge on our end is getting all of this information into the hands of the people that need it. And it's, it is, um, you know, you can send it out electronically, but so much gets missed because we're just bombarded with information still. Um, so we try our best to, to highlight those things. We've got a new business package that's that are new businesses that are opening are receiving. So we've got in inroads there, but um, certainly from this group, and I know that uh, you'll work with Natalie closely, but um, any suggestions or any thoughts that people have in that regard are always very useful. I know everybody is living such busy lives and both, both professionally and personally that it's, um, yeah, that's our, that's our biggest obstacle, but yeah. Thank you. Um, may uh, I? Uh, Carrie, yes, please. Um, I, I was just wondering um, in terms of getting the message out there, if there's an opportunity to be more active in some of the social groups in town. Um, I, I just, I mean, I seem to follow a lot of them and I don't always see content posted about the BIA. And I'm wondering if that's another way to just, get those, um, get that information out there. Cause I see so many people moving to town and starting up small businesses and, and they might not know where to go and just be having a presence looking into some of those groups on a regular basis to touch base. Absolutely, yeah. I think Natalie will be an excellent uh, resource for that. She's, um, she's got lots of experience in that area, so we will perhaps it will be beneficial if Carrie we can um, connect with you offline to chat about those options. Absolutely. So um, a couple of comments from me if, if I may. Um, I thought this was a remarkable comprehensive report. Um, I mean it, it, this there's a lot in it. Uh, uh, Bert you've just joined us so welcome. Um, we'll come to you in a sec. <laughs> um, it has, I, I mean, it was, a, it was an absolute summary of, of what Shannon did in the first year. Um, a spectacular, if you like, resource for Natalie as she takes over because, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing really missing here. All right, you, you can see what's been done. And it was done, you know, remembering in a very difficult time um, you know, of COVID, uh, you know, we didn't have the freedoms that, you know, we have up until today and hopefully even more from, from them. Um, if I look at it as, as a question of, okay, that's what we've done. Uh, Kerry raised a very good point, I think, in the last meeting where we looked at this. Is there an action plan for coming forward? Um, and yes, you know, Shannon said, yes, there's one in the works and, you know, happy to, to share it and whatever. I'm sure, you know, that probably, um, you know, uh, that probably got um, a little bit sidelined, I, I would imagine at the moment, but, but it's kind of important as, as we go forward. Um, I think that um, my, my looking at it, you know, it was a response to what are the deliverables which were set out um, a year ago when, you know, when council financed this. And, and I think uh, uh, one of the items was to come up with reports to the um, committee, um, nothing long, but I, I would think that would be something that I'd, I'd see we can't wade through something like this, but it, it would be nice to have a simple uh, one, two, three, four, five. This, you know, these are the updates to these points, all right, and particularly those deliverables. I think a remarkable piece of work. Hopefully, this next year is going to be a lot easier. Um, you know, I, I, uh, a lot of this has been done online. There's a huge amount of information. I don't know whether this report. Uh, Randy, you could probably tell it was sent to the consultant who's doing the economic development strategy. Um, I hope I hope it was. If it wasn't, I suggest it would be because, you know, we can see the kind of thing that, you know, that has been done in the last year, which which has been remarkable. Um, I think that uh, so a, a much simpler little report thing and a bit of an action plan might be good uh, to come out of this. Uh, and I'm at last comment, I'm always reminded 
when I, and, and I'm not an economic development professional, um, but I do remember attending the, the BC Economic Development uh, Conference a couple of years ago and listening to presentations from EDOs around BC. And the one theme that they all came out with in a cross discussion is that 70% of their time was out of the office walking the streets. And, you know, in the midst of COVID, um, I was out, you know, walking streets, talking to, to business owners and um, how to get the message out. You know, it, it probably took us about two hours to go up and down Beacon Avenue, let alone anything else. Um, or more to the point, the reason I brought up Harbour Road this morning, I've been talking to people on Harbour Road and they would really love to have somebody knock on their door or, or whatever and go and see them. I don't know how, Kerry, you get to meet with uh, home-based businesses, but that's a very good point. Maybe, maybe a, I don't know, not a pizza party, but a coffee party or something. You, you know what I mean? And I'm sure Kerry would give you some great ideas there as to how to bring that group together. So uh, a fantastic uh, thing from my perspective, um, good basis for going forward, but let's see some specifics. I think that, that might be my, my comments. I found it fascinating. I, didn't, I also didn't know there was all this that went on. But um, you've joined us. I, I've just seen a little chat pop up there. I'm glad you, you came in, even from uh, out, of the, out of the country. Much appreciate that. Um, we've got to the point of commenting on this um, report from the SBIA so far. Um, before I jump to you, though, I, I should let Morgan respond to my comments. She may want to tell me I'm, I'm out to lunch here. So uh, feel free, Morgan. You know. <laughs> Not today, David. Maybe another day I'll tell you that. But <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it's definitely when Shannon and I sat down and we're reviewing kind of how to go about putting this report together. Um, it is, it's a lot of information. I mean, I think it speaks to the type of um, results that we were looking, certainly from the onset of COVID when COVID kind of hit, and I would say it was about September. So COVID hit in uh, March, 2020, and then we moved into September. And it was at that time that kind of the dust was starting to settle. Um, and certainly from my end uh, as the executive director of the BIA, we were starting to just see a lot of anxiety from within the business community, um, obviously the downtown business community, what's coming up? How long is this going to last? We need resources, we need information. Yes, of course, but we were also um, receiving so many requests from outside the business um, or the downtown business community. And that's where the fruition of um, this MOU came. And so as we, as Shannon got started in the position, it was just so evident that yes, there's lots of resources. Yes, there's lots of information that needs to be circulated and it needed to be put together. I felt in a concise way that we could refer back to. And I mean, now we are in the position with Natalie onboarding that this is an incredible resource. And as we're going through EAC changes, for those of you who are interested in reading a 31 page document that's accessible um, and sometimes it is just necessary to have it in writing i think that you know as we go into um, the reporting phase for the end of this year we'll definitely uh we'll keep it more concise we received that feedback and it is noted um, and perhaps this is just more useful from an internal perspective, but this is also information that's available. This entire report is information that's available to all Sydney businesses. So there can be a reflection on the work that has been done and those tax dollars that are being spent on this recovery or not tax dollars, but sorry, <laughs> the, the funding that's been received um, as a result of, of COVID recovery. So, um, I know it. I know it's long. I'll just leave it at that. I know it's long, but it's a lot of work that's been gone into it. But I hope that it reflects the amount of work that A needed to be done and B, um, the the type of 
resources that were available for our business community that we've been capitalizing on. So, yeah. No, I, I hope you didn't think I was being critical. I was actually no, saying no, 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 no. This, this is wonderful, all right? But something different going forward, so. Yeah, absolutely, I do, I understand that. <laughs> Just, um, yeah, I certainly from the council table as well, we we did receive a, the, the feeling that it was, it was lengthy, but um, yeah, it was, how do you put all of that work into just a couple of pages? I don't know, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, Bert, I, uh, we've obviously got you without video, but uh, hopefully you can hear us. Um, would you like to make any comments? Oh, there you go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, you know what? Uh, I, I don't have the greatest connection. I'm just flipping through the document now. So if you give me a couple of minutes, um, I'll collect my thoughts and uh, report back then. All right, we, we can be flexible. We, we'll come back uh, on that one. We'll simply um, work. Oh, Kerry, please. Sorry, I just had um, one more note that I thought would have been great as we're talking through this, that um, it'd be um, fantastic to know in future reports just to have a section maybe on key learnings. Yeah. Um, just to take away as, as we're moving forward and moving into like the next planning session. Fantastic point. I know yeah. that might shift a lot between COVID and hopefully non-COVID years, but yeah. That's a very good point. I'm just adding that into our notes here. Perfect. Okay, I think that was helpful. Um, and uh, Bert, if you'd give me an indication, raise your hand or whatever, when you'd like to comment. And uh, I, it's probably not correct protocol, but maybe we could just move to um, 5B and, and tuck that away and give you a moment. All right. Uh, that, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll defer re receiving that report and the comments um, and look to the report on the SIP Municipal Partners meeting. Um, if anybody has any comment on that, if anybody went through, um, I commented, I think, last time on this. Um, if not, um, I'd look for a motion to receive for information, please. Anyone? Yeah, thank you, Alyssa. Uh, second. Oh, thank you, Deanna. All, all in favor? There we go. So received unanimously. And um, we'll look, uh, maybe we'll give Bert a little more time, as I say, with. Uh, with the tolerance and understanding of the committee, and maybe we could ask Randy to give us a, his update, please, on the economic development strategy item six. Yeah, thank you, David. Yeah, so the um, the economic development strategy is um, is is coming along. Um, I think we're reaching a, a the completion of a major phase um, coming up, and that's the. Um, basically the current situation assessment that uh, Lionsgate is undertaking. So they've been collecting a lot of the uh, reports and background information, et cetera. And uh, through the month of February, I reported out last time about the um, community and business um, surveys that were being undertaken. So those closed, those surveys closed on February 28th. Um, and I have to say, I'm, I'm impressed with uh, the responses that we've received both uh, from um, community members as well as businesses. Um, we received 272 community survey submissions, uh, which I think is extremely positive um, on, a, on an economic development type survey. Uh, and we received 116 business survey submissions. So when you think about the total number of businesses that we have in Sydney, that have business licenses, 300 and something, 116 is 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 I think uh, I think very good. The target for both of those was on the community survey side we wanted to get at least 200, and on the business survey side we wanted to get at least 100. So we exceeded both uh, both of those uh, those projections. So so I think very very positive. And Lionsgate right now is in the process of reviewing and uh, analyzing those survey submissions. And uh, all of this will culminate in the 
submission of a current situation assessment report that will be um, provided to, uh, to Andrew and myself. And we expect to see that uh, around March 18th uh, for, for our review. Where that current situation assessment report goes following that, it could be referred to the, um, to the uh, EAC, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll discuss that uh, with, uh, with, with Lionsgate at that stage. Um, it is just sort of a high level, sort of a general overview of what the current economic situation uh, is. That report also, that draft report is gonna form the basis for the next phase of, uh, of uh, Lionsgate work. And that is uh, uh, the organization of a series of focus group sessions uh, with, uh, with businesses uh, within the community. And uh, so this will be, uh, we're sort of coordinating it with Lionsgate in terms of, in terms of um, uh, figuring out uh, the various focus groups, we're looking at probably organizing it based on the various business uh, sectors that we have within the community and that uh, we've created for the EAC, so the Downtown Retail Business Service, West Sydney Marine, Hospitality, Tourism, Home-Based, etc. So they're looking at undertaking these focus group sessions uh, closer to the end of March. Uh, they'd like to do them in person now with potential restrictions being lifted, et cetera, may be feasible to do that. They're really keen on coming out and, uh, and having those sessions specifically with, uh, with uh, selected businesses. So we're, uh, we're working with them on the recruitment. We're really hoping that uh, the BIA can provide a level of assistance on that as well, so uh, so we're we're uh, we're we've reached out to them and uh, and are hoping that uh, we can work with them in terms of the business recruitment uh, aspect. So we're looking at probably four or five businesses per sector, and uh, and as I said, Lionsgate will be facilitating that component. I should say as well on the survey uh, aspect, uh, one of the reasons we've been able to. Uh, or Lionsgate uh, was so successful with respect to reaching out to businesses. Uh, kudos to, to Morgan and her team for, for really helping get, uh, get the word out to the businesses and getting them to complete the survey. So I just wanted to acknowledge Morgan and her team because they were, uh, they were really, really helpful in terms, of, in terms of that process. So uh, focus group sessions at the end of March, uh, and uh, and then basically that'll that'll finalize the uh, current situation assessment component. We'll have a final report, and then uh, Lionsgate will look to finalize that document in early April, and from there we'll move on to some specific planning workshops that. Uh, that uh, um, will likely take place in mid-April. And I met with, Andrew and I met with Lionsgate yesterday on this, and we're probably looking at uh, um, uh, involving specifically the EAC in those, in, those, in those planning workshop components. So those are where we really get down to the idea of developing sort of the overall vision goals, you know, sort of some of the key potential strategies that will ultimately make its way into uh, the economic development strategy as we move forward to preparation. Uh, I think we're on target for uh, completion of, um, of the strategy in June, which is really, really positive. And uh, yeah, Alliancegate has been, uh, um, as expected, they've been, they've been good to work with. So I think we've made great progress up, uh, up until now. And as I said, I think we're on, we're on track for that completion in June. Thank you very much, Randy. That's that's very informative, very helpful. Um, any anybody questions, uh, comments for Randy? No, no. Looking around, the uh, inevitably one from me. Um, <laughs> the uh, I think no. That's that sounds like an excellent approach. Um, a really good response. I mean, you know, those numbers are, are really good. Um, I, I guess two thoughts, and, and you mentioned certainly an EAC response, you know, later on or an engagement later on. Um, we don't have too many members, all right, with specifics uh, at the moment uh, uh, for areas, as you mentioned. Um, don't know whether you'd think about perhaps, you know, the, the people on, on the EAC being part of the focus groups. 
um, you know, that might be useful because later on then they've heard from the rest of the focus group as they go forward. That's just an idea suggestion. You know. No, I appreciate that, David. It is a good suggestion. I know, I know, um, I know that uh, Lionsgate is sort of suggesting that uh, this is sort of the opportunity to to involve, I guess, um, you know, specific businesses within those sectors to again get their their view on um, on the uh, current situation assessment and and did they get it right? I think as part of that focus group session as well, they talked about you know, looking at uh, some of the sort of the very basic questions around, uh, um, you know, what, are, what, are, what they feel are the, um, the, the current sort of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So doing that sort of SWOT analysis kind of approach as well with those, uh, with those business folks in the various sectors. Um, but I'll certainly pass along your comments about, uh, you know, the possibility of, um, of um, specific uh, EAC members being involved in the focus groups. Again, as we get into recruitment, there may be some challenges in terms of, you know, reaching the numbers. So I think, you know, we might benefit from having uh, some, some EAC members as part, of, uh, as part of those sessions. So a good point. Just I want to comment on the, on the survey as well is that uh, I think what I find most impressive is that we've had that level of response, even given what I think right now is a bit of survey fatigue within the community, like we have, and I know the BIA has been involved in surveys, like we have a uh, municipality has a number of surveys that we have out there currently and, uh, and really sort of looking for community feedback on. So uh, this is just a yet another one. And I know they tried to develop so that it was, you know, time sensitive and, and aware of that, uh, that uh, how busy folks are, but uh, a lot of surveys on the go right now. And um, I know uh, uh, that there is a bit of that element of survey fatigue out there, so. Okay, yeah, that, uh, Diana, please. Um, just a quick question, uh, Randy, and forgive me if you did mention it. I think you said that you and Andrew would get the results or the assessment of those surveys around March 18th and then would it go to council after that or will it be public or will the EAC have a, a chance to look at, at those results or that report? Well, you know, that's, I think that's something that, you know, we're going to have to, we're going to have to discuss with Lionsgate around, around what happens with respect to the, the draft current situation assessment. I mean, it's a, it's really their, it's, it's really sort of a culmination of all of the input and their analysis on, on all the reports, et cetera. Um, when I'd actually broached this early on in terms of when we were looking at the, the actual sort of terms of reference for, uh, for their work, whether or not the current situation assessment would be reported out to council. They've indicated, they indicated to me that typically uh, in working with other, um, municipalities on developing economic development strategies that that's that's more of a document that they use as background for for sort of the next phase of of uh, of the the workshops etc um and that typically they wouldn't be presenting this to council for their review and consideration or or that sort of thing i mean my view it's important that council's aware of it that council sees it uh but in terms of it going to a council meeting where you know, as a draft where it's, you know, uh, the possibility of suggested modifications, et cetera, I'm, you know, I, I would want to have that discussion a little bit further with Lionsgate around that. But it's a good good question, Deanna. Okay, fair enough. Thanks, Randy. You bet. I think a, a very nice answer, Randy. Uh, you oh, know, thank you. Uh, you just, you, you don't want to go to a drag race with your parking brake on, all right? There's, there's a time schedule for this. You know, there, there, is a, there is a pretty tight schedule for the completion of, uh, of the uh, economic development strategy, super important document, but we also have to acknowledge it's, it's, it's not an OCP. <laughs> no, they're kind of busy, you know, I'm, 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 anyway. Um, and if you need anything, I'm always available and unemployed, all right? <laughs> so, yeah. There you go. Uh, anybody else who uh, questions um, uh, for Randy on that one? No. All right. Um, thank you very much. I'll, I'll leave that. And um, could I come back? Uh, Bert, would you like to make your comments now? And we'll, we'll close out that item, please.
Uh, thanks again, uh, David, for uh, amending this uh, agenda a little bit for me. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm prepared to receive the report. It, it uh, looks very good. Um, just like to provide my two cents. I think there's a heavy emphasis on uh, attracting more tourism. I like the idea of the uh, marine tourism uh, awareness for, for March. Um, just some feedback on, from what I'm hearing from some neighbors is uh, they're getting into the charter business. Yeah. Um, the Sydney Marina, so that should drive some uh, additional business. Um, one thought with uh, towards all of this is uh, I, I see the references to earned media. It, maybe there's a consideration, and of course, budgets are always important. But the idea of uh, kind of earned paid media, um, you know, basically sponsorships for for stories to to uh, attract more tourism, if that seems to be the strategy for a lot of things. Um, that's, that's the only thought, uh, you know, happy to talk about that more if, uh, anyone has any questions about it, but otherwise I think the strategy is good. Uh, you know, the, the, the reflection on what challenges have been, I think are, uh, pale in comparison to the successes that have been, uh, over, over the case of the pandemic and as we're coming out of it. So thank you very much. Uh, prepared to receive it. Okay. So I'll take that as a motion to receive. Um, second, someone looking around. Thank you, Kerry. Um, all in favor? There we go, received unanimously. And I'm sure Anna will summarize beautifully our, our comments. Um, and, and then of course, um, council always reads the EAC uh, minutes with incredible interest. So uh, moving now to um, item seven, and Councillor Wainwright, would you like to give us your council liaison report, please? There isn't actually a lot to report. Um, the significant item is that the draft OCP bylaw is out for review, for public review. Uh, it's a six week uh, engagement period, closes on the 11th of April. There are also a couple of, um, uh, open house opportunities to uh, um, you know find out uh, more about the uh, the OCP and of course um, an online questionnaire uh, as it, I think has already been mentioned. So we're not expecting that the draft OCP is going to be re uh, referred specifically to this committee. There's lots of opportunity for the business community to comment. And I suggest that um, that you take advantage of it. Um, and I'd encourage you to uh, let others know that it's out there. Um, you know, we're we're hoping to have uh, uh, quite a lot of feedback on the draft, and then it will eventually go to uh, council and go through uh, a public hearing process before uh, final adoption. So, uh... Any, thank you, uh, Councillor Wainwright. Any questions uh, for Councillor Wainwright? All right, well, once again, thank you very much. And uh, having read the draft, um, the, it's, it's a very interesting document. I would encourage people to, uh, to, to go through it um, the, and take advantage as the Councillor said. Um, Move to point number eight now, our, our round table discussion, perhaps one of the more important things that we do, um, one of the, the focuses of, of this EAC when it was created was to provide for the, the possibility of discussion um, as we go forward and some interesting times, I'm sure. Uh, Rod, would you like to kick us off here and give us an update from the perspective of, you know, we're all gonna fly, are we not? You know? <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> uh, all all indications are that uh, things are improving. Um, just even anecdotally, uh, Air Canada is reporting that uh, uh, they don't have a single empty seat right now on their scheduled flights and that are um, like this week. So um, it it is it is looking positive. I think uh, uh, April is going to be uh, hopefully a good month, and we'll see. Uh, it seems like any bit of good news as far as lifting of restrictions um, 
whether or not you can directly relate it to air travel or not, it just seems to encourage people to perhaps start to live their life a little bit more normal. And that includes travel. So um, things are looking up. Uh, the one bit of good news, a uh, new business at the airport is was the announcement of Lynx Air, uh, which is a, a, a low cost, uh, low cost uh, air carrier operating out of uh, Calgary. Um, and they will uh, be commencing service at twice a week between Calgary and Victoria on May the 12th. And they're looking to increase it to uh, three flights a week uh, sometime in June. Um, the, the cost is quite remarkable. It's $39 one way. Wow. Um, but when you start adding in uh, luggage and picking your seat and everything like that, it does, it does start to add up, but $39 is pretty good. So, um, so we're encouraged by that. It's, uh, there seems to be confidence now in, in, in the, in the air industry. And in, I think in the travel industry in, in general. So, um, wow. that's, that's impressive. Uh, uh, questions, uh, f from the other members, please. Um, I'll, I'll just ask Rod. Um, so I uh, fully supporting his colloquial evidence there of uh, traveling, uh, travel opening up. Um, I'm, I'm joining you guys from about as far as you can possibly be from Sydney. And my travel is all booked for the next uh, three months. So uh, air travel is definitely back and the world's opening up. Where did you say you were, Bert? You cut out slightly there. Sorry, uh, I'm in South Africa right now. Okay, all right. Yeah. Just checking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, questions, comments from anybody else for, for Rod? Um, I was just going to comment on that, that um, I'm working with um, Indigenous tourism and for a few other tourism operators, and we are um, booking visits um, to British Columbia from media coming out of New York right now, where that wasn't happening to, you know, in the last two years. So, for instance, we have to travel and leisure and Condé Nast coming to BC in the next three months, and those outlets were never um, booking any trips into Canada or any coverage. So it's nice to see that those travel publications are assigning stories and seeing that their readers are going to be want to travel to, to Canada and to BC. Thank you for that. that that's interesting for a couple of reasons. Um, Rod, a couple of questions for me. I, um, one uh, you know, we, it's too early really to see any clear impact of fuel prices, but um, is there a sort of benchmark at all? That would be one question. Um, the other one would be um, any thoughts as to whether that nice Amazon building is on, on track? And do you have any other exciting plans for us on airport lands commercially? <laughs> Uh, okay, answering your questions, gas prices. I'm assuming you're you're thinking the impact to the cost of air travel. Yes. Uh, I saw some mention of it uh, in on, on online today, but I have no insight into that whatsoever. Um, the Amazon building, uh, they um, experienced a, a quite a bit of delay because of the uh, because of the weather. Uh, impact uh, last year and uh, and log logistics challenges, but now um, they seem to be back on track um, and expect to be in operation by November. So uh, that construction project is like the fastest I've ever 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 seen, um, but uh, but it's it's looking good, and we just. Uh, we just um, looked at what uh, what the cladding, the exterior cladding, is going to look like. It, it has a it has an art an art piece to it, um, and it is going to be quite beautiful. So uh, it's not finalized yet, but uh, basically, what you'll probably see all along that south face, all along uh, uh, Beacon Avenue, is imagery uh, related to, uh, to to mountains and the ocean. It's uh, it's going to be quite something. Um, and um, we have several other land uh, 
developments uh, on the books right now. I can't, uh, I can't announce anything. Uh, as soon as I can, um, this group will be one of the first to know. But, uh, but there are some uh, um, potentially some, some uh, really good developments on, on the horizon. That's good to hear. It, it, I, I wasn't looking for specifics. I was just thinking about, you know, it, is, is the economy looking active? That kind of feedback is, is, is helpful for the, for the group and for the local in, in particular, you know. Yeah, and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll just comment on our situation as far as the amount of interest in terms of land development and people uh, interested in locating the airport is not unique. It, it certainly took us by surprise because um, this has been the busiest two years I have ever seen as far as uh, interest and, and development. That seems to be a common uh, occurrence at airports all across North America. And I don't really have an answer on why, but when I talk to my, my colleagues at, at other airports, they've experienced the, uh, the same thing. So, um, so it speaks well for us in terms of confidence um, in the area. Um, and also maybe just people are recognizing uh, being on an airport is a good, is, is, is a good thing. There you go. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. Maybe the effect of fuel prices will raise that 39 to $42. I mean, you, you, you never know, you know, sort of thing. Um, see how we go. Alyssa, would you like to update us and uh, give us your thoughts of, it's been an exciting couple of weeks at the museum. You know. Yeah, uh, which I'm wondering which part you're referring to, but it's uh, it's been busy, not pre-pandemic busy, but as busy a family day as we were certainly comfortable with. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our 16th Lego exhibition this past three months, and we have another exhibit coming at the beginning of April. It's called The Suitcase Project. It's coming out of the Nikkei National Museum, and it's an art installation on Japanese internment, which is something completely different than we've ever done before. Uh, as far as spring break coming up, uh, we have some fun activities planned, but again, we're sort of limited by capacity because we're not taking um, vaccine passports. We were never mandated to. Uh, so waiting to see what restrictions allow. It's been really hard to plan events, of course, as, as things seem to be changing all the time. I'm not able to report on the last CAG meeting because while there has been one, I was not able to attend because we have some renovations going on downstairs. Our multi-purpose room project is uh, set to finish pretty quickly. And that is a space that we hope to be able to make available to community groups for uh, rental for a nominal fee to hold meetings and workshops and things. So we really opened that space up. And uh, it's if you haven't been to the museum, it's been quite exciting uh, to see all these changes. Our floor has finally finished and a number of other things that I thought for sure would be done last summer and are just wrapping up now. That's that's exciting. That's um, the does and and forgive my ignorance. Does the CA cover Art C? Um, Art C is a member. Yes, is a member. Yeah, yeah there you go. Um, questions from anybody else? Uh, if, um, no. I'll, I'll I'll ask you a question then off off the the record about some Art C stuff. Thank you very much, Alyssa. So, Bert, you are actually the next one round in my thing. Tell us, you know, apart from being in South Africa, um, you know, what have you what have you got to share with us? Yeah, no, I'm happy to share. Uh, uh, so, in terms of what I can see on the uh, new developments on flanking either side of uh, Beacon by about a block, um, I'm really seeing that uh, the retail spaces um, occupancy rate is ticking down. Uh, sorry, um, vacancy. And uh, those uh, those um, mixed use developments are are finding tenants on the ground floors, and it really looks um, it really looks positive in that regard. Uh, I see that uh, a several um, of, of the larger developments along along that corridor are going to be completed uh, within the next few months, and we'll probably see a lot more residents moving in as uh, I think these are some of the more larger developments that were approved. Uh, I know some are rental units as well. And uh, just uh, I'll also pick up, I, I shared the uh, just colloquial evidence about uh, neighbors uh, with, uh, with boats uh, getting into the charter business. 
and uh, they say their bookings are, are doing well. And, uh, you know, I, I think with this uh, pandemic um, kind of receding, uh, we will see the uptick in tourism as well as just uh, normal hospitality uh, picking back up uh, with uh, the dropping of, of uh, provincial mandates. So uh, all things look uh, optimistic. Um, again, I'll, I'll tie it back to just capacity constraints um, in terms of infrastructure to accommodate uh, influx of, uh, of customers and consumers, visitors and residents. Um, but uh, that's not necessarily this uh, this committee's uh, purview, but uh, raised the raise the point that at some point uh, economic uh, development uh, faces constraints based off of infrastructure. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments for for Bert? Okay. So again, last but uh, you know, we we come on around. Diana, would you like to? Oh, we got Kerry, but you know, sorry. Diana, would you like to comment? comment on on what Bert said uh, if you have any I, I thought you had your hand up there no, no sorry I was just touching my face <laughs> oh, good okay sorry Thank about you. that thanks Bert <laughs> all right we'll move around to Kerry please uh, uh, your thoughts of what you've been doing and, and whatever uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I've seen a, a lot of my clients within the, the tourism industry um, making a shift and it's just really happened in the last two months that I, I've seen a lot of people that I'm working with planning events now, moving away from virtual events and to actually planning events. And uh, so I have like my first series of events that will be coming up this summer with um, partners, including some long table dinners and things like that, which are nice to see. Um, and in terms of like a lot of home-based businesses around here, I'm also seeing the same with people who maybe who have constricted to um, having more of a home-based office rather than um, a space, you know, that they had pre-pandemic. Now they're looking at um, getting out more, maybe looking at more shared spaces, kind of like those options that um, people have with, you know, Quench in downtown Victoria, where you have shared spaces. So people who have home-based businesses, but are also seeking out other spaces to interact with other people that, you know, have businesses or in the gig economy. Um, so the really desire to get out there and, and network more and um, uh, be more involved in the community and connect more with other like-minded entrepreneurs and seeing more of that in uh, Sydney for sure. So, thank you. Any comments, questions for Kerry? Or there we go, Diana. Um, do you have anything else to add? Something to add? Or... Yeah, and I'm not sure. Do you mean to comment on Kerry? No, or... no, no, no. Oh, Let's my just turn. Hear from... Yeah, your turn. <laughs> yeah. Finally, Thanks, and, and I apologize, but with Zoom, people jump around all over the place, and you know. Uh, absolutely, no, no, no apologies necessary. Thank you. A um, couple different things. Um, we actually rolled out a vaccine mandate uh, or the vaccine, sorry, passport um, February 15th. And it was, we were really quite late to join that, but um, we tried to get it rolled out a little bit earlier and the board really felt that we needed to, um, we needed to give our, our uh, membership base in particular enough notice. Um, so we rolled that out February 15th. And while we did get, we got about a dozen and a half very upset, angry and, you know, legal action threatening type emails. Um, the, the response to it has been really quite positive. I have to say, regardless of what side of that argument you are on when we're dealing, I think with a lot of very young children that are pre-vaccine age, um, a lot of grandparents and others who might be considered higher risk. We felt that it was a good idea and the right thing to do for our, for the setting at the uh, at the aquarium. And the response has been really positive. Um, I would say, and unfortunately, I don't have the exact numbers. But when we looked at the numbers at the end of February, they were much closer to what they had been in 2019 than they were in 2020 or 2021. So 
um, definitely coming back. Um, we opened as of March, we're now open six days a week. So that's the first time in two years that we've been open more than five days a week. So that's hopefully a step in the right direction, uh, especially with spring break coming up. We're hoping to spread out some of those crowds, echoing Alyssa, what Alyssa said, family day was absolutely as busy as we, <laughs> we could be comfortable dealing with. It was um, that whole weekend was really, really busy, but family day in particular was kind of off the charts considering what it's been like the last two years. Um, of course, we're disappointed about the news as I'm sure many are in Sydney about the Anacortes Ferry, whether or not that's a big surprise. You know, everybody had their fingers crossed that that would be running again for at least the summer, if not the spring. Um, but we will make do as far as staffing um, looking for summer staff and just filling voids. I know that's often a conversation with this group. Um, from our end, what we see is it's still challenging, but it's not any worse than it has been any other year. So as, as, as challenging as it can be, I think uh, we're finding some hope in the fact that it's not hopeless. It is not, um, it's not threatening to shut us down um, because we still hear stories of that places being without the staff capacity to operate. So that, that is not the case. So um, we're kind of hopeful about that. And I have to say, there's a lot of third party ticket sellers coming out of the woodwork, looking to help us um, get the word out or get tickets sold to places throughout the US and Eastern Canada. So far, they're not really mentioning Europe, but um, certainly more farther afield than our marketing dollars go. So that's been a little bit interesting. We'll see what happens. And that's all I've got. Fascinating. No, thank you for that. Kerry, please. Sorry, Deanna, I actually do have a question for you. Um, so the, um, I'm just kind of curious, and you might not know the answer to this, but if there are, um, if um, Bunny Henry and they do relax some of the PHO orders. Do you anticipate as a business that you would be keeping the vaccine mandate um, in place regardless of the changes to the PHO orders? That is a question that I can't answer. I'm, I am can answer almost for certain that we will keep mask um, requirements for the center regardless of what happens. I don't know what's going to happen with the, um, I don't know what's gonna happen with the, with the passports at this point. I think that's going to be probably a consensus thing among the staff and the board and looking at all the evidence and, and what the, you know, doing some kind of risk assessment. We, mm -hmm. we want people to feel comfortable, but at the same time, we don't want to ostracize uh, huge parts of the, um, of the community. So we're going to have to wait and see. I don't know. We, like I said, we were really late in the game in taking that up after um, Science World and Vancouver Aquarium and the World BC Museum, for example. And again, once again, we might be watching to see what some of these other places do. Thank you. Uh, anyone else uh, questions for, for Diana? No, I think that that's you raised some very interesting thought foods for thought there as to what we will go to. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much. So um, my only, well, I guess my, my comments, we touched on a couple of things today. Um, I attended the, the Sydney Breakfast Club meeting this morning. Um, first one in person in, in two years. Um, probably a bit of a leader, um, you know, there's, there's not too many people meeting in person at the moment. Um, very nice to be back over at the Dakota Cafe um, and, and good to, to take a bit of time to um, network with, with some people. Um, some thoughts that came out of that and, and discussion with people to follow up on Randy's point there that, uh, yep, there is a, a great deal of um, uh, not another survey thinking, 
um, but you know that one for the EAC, you know, we're just surveyed out was what we what people were saying, you know, you, and it would be nice if you actually saw a timeline for something coming out of it. That's perhaps why you got uh, a good response, if you like, that there's going to be something coming rather than oh yeah, we'd like to know, but we're never going to come back and tell you anything. Um, that came up quite honestly. Um, some thoughts that uh, it was really great to get back in person. And the question was asked whether we should continue the Zoom bit for the Breakfast Club and the overall feeling was no, don't do that. Um, you know, we should really, uh, we, we, it's good to get back in person and, and see. Um, hopefully, you know, with masks gone and, and whatever. Um, the, um, it, as I say, you know, some, some thoughts there, some, uh, you know, about, of course, it's, it's still, um, difficult to get staff lots of people saying you know that uh, you know how how hard it is still and and the feeling that uh, people had somehow got used to not going out to work um that was that was came across quite strongly in several business segments um even down to you know summer jobs um, and whatnot nobody wants to work weekends nobody wants to uh, to do these things and, and lots of people suffering from, from that. But, um, a, a, and a good deal of in, interest, by the way, in, in the OCP's reviews that are going on uh, across. Um, I, did meet, um, I did meet Patrick Earle, um, who asked me to pass on his regards to Morgan. And, um, you know, uh, look forward to get together and talk about when they do their, um, workshop for uh, I'm sure Natalie is going to be involved in that to uh, in the, in next month uh, nice to see what central Saanich is doing from from that perspective so um, a, a lot of the ground that was covered uh, and my thoughts were, have already been covered today so won't go through that and I've asked my questions um, unless anybody has anything else they want to add um, Andrew We've, we've not heard from you, please, please. Thank you, David. As uh, Randy's alternate, I haven't been attending too many of these lately, but um, I figured I'd come and see the new faces, uh, introduce myself. I'm the CFO for the town. We've got a few initiatives coming up that um, I'd like to make you aware of. Uh, so you're probably aware that we recently approved our budget for the year with a 3.76% tax increase. Well, that's a little higher than our normal. Uh, it's sounding like we're gonna be very much on the lower end of the range within the CRD. So I think uh, we're doing okay there. And further to that, um, council has committed to hopefully finishing up the review of our tax distribution policy, which uh, will consider the differences between residential and non-residential tax rates. I'm planning to bring a report and presentation forward on March 21st to council, well, committee of the whole anyway. Um, and if you have time to um, either watch that live or perhaps after the fact, I think it might be useful information as you're um, speaking with members of the business community. I think we're, as a community, we're doing fairly well already in terms of the differential between residential and business, but there we could be doing even better and we'll see if council uh, agrees with that assessment and is willing to uh, perhaps put that in place, whether all at once or over a number of years. So I'm just looking back at my materials uh, over the last nine years of considering this topic and um, updating the numbers and uh, some of the discussion points. So hopefully you'll find it interesting. And if you have any comments or questions after the fact, um, you know where to find me. Always. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. My oh, apologies that I didn't invite you in there. You know. Sorry, one other update. Um, the BIA is up for renewal. This is the fifth year of their um, current mandate. So they're looking to renew for another five years. And 
we plan to initiate that renewal process in April next month. And um, that'll be roughly an eight week process from beginning to end. Um, it's roughly gonna be a status quo renewal, um, no real changes or increases in the levy, but uh, it does have to be, there, there is a formal process for renewing it every five years. So uh, the BIA is almost 10 years old now, and it's a very good example of what, you know, a small subset of the commercial community um, coming together for their own mutual benefit. and. I keep wondering when Harbor Road, uh, West Side Industrial are gonna do something similar where they're willing to pull their, pool their resources, um, assign a levy that can be used to promote their own very specific sectors the way the downtown commercial area has. I think it could be interesting, but the BIA's mandate is primarily to support their members, which are in the downtown, so the, the fact that we're doing this uh, two-year business development uh, pilot by through the town contributing um, funding to allow them to extend their mandate beyond the downtown area, I think is also proven to be a very effective uh, example of what could be accomplished. But uh, again, uh, after that two years of funding, they're slated to go back to supporting their local area. So we'll have to see whether some model can come forward whereby um, additional funding could supplement that. Open to talk to you individually, Natalie, at some point, get to uh, know you a bit. Thank you, Andrew. I, uh, and and that's, that's an important piece of information that you just brought up there. Um, I, I just wonder, from my point of view, whether um, as part of that renewal and, and your comments about the possible, let's say, change in scope on, on whatever, um, and, and having regard that the existing mandate, I don't think runs out until toward the end of the year, am I, am, am I right? Um, yeah. Might it not be an idea to wait until the report from the economic strategy? before finalizing that? Well, I think the BIA would like some certainty about continuity beyond this year. Mm -hmm. So if there is a recommendation coming out of the strategy to perhaps look at adding to that area, it can be done. Um, it, it could be reopened, but I'm not sure the BIA would be comfortable waiting until the end of the year to know whether they're going to exist beyond December. No, I was just thinking you you were talking about May and uh, the strategy is due for June. I, anyway, I leave it to you. Councillor okay. Wainwright, you, you, you'd like to jump in on this one. Yeah, I, I would just suggest it, it doesn't make sense to defer uh, the renewal of the BIA because if there is a problem with the ratification vote, you need to have time for plan B. Mm. A uh, good point I hadn't thought of. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah. All right, just an idea. So, okay. yeah. You know I have these ideas, Andrew. You know. uh, it's, it's a good point, though, because it's something we've talked about internally um, regarding the ED strategy uh -huh. is, uh, let, let's see where the recommendations uh, point at the end of the day. We're really wondering who is gonna deliver on these uh, recommendations. Uh, there, there's no ED uh, economic development officer uh, position within the town. Uh, I'm not sure that the strategy will recommend one, but there will be recommendations coming out of it. So how are they gonna be actioned and through what entity? That could lead to additional um, funding to one of our yeah. local ED organizations to perhaps um, do something on contract, but I'm, I'm just speculating here. Thank you, Andrew. Anyway, uh, with an eye to time, um, and I'm not hopeful I'm not cutting you off there, but thank you for the, for the comments. Um, we're left with that question that we pushed towards the end of the meeting as to what do we do about the chair, guys? Um, 
I, I, I'm open to suggestions, um, comments, questions from other members, volunteers. <laughs> David, question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how many of our regular members are missing? Uh, at the moment, um, we, we have, I believe, around the total headcount of 12, uh, which is allowed. We have eight members at the moment. Okay. So there are four vacancies on the committee. Mm -hmm. There are eight members appointed, and there are three people not present today. Yep. Okay. Or uh, I, mean, I think there are two people not present today. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, Bert turned up, so we we've got six now. So yeah, the um, uh, a, a question suggestion from me. I mean, we at the moment we have the uh, you know um, we've only got a couple of months now until you know. I think the most important thing at the moment is this uh, uh, this result from the economic strategy which is due in you know we're looking now at april may june three months from now um which will be of interest to everybody here but um would it be reasonable at the moment to leave the chair on the table and just continue operating as we are is that possible if you don't elect the chair you will continue operating the way you are I'm just thinking, uh, would anybody like to um, nominate anybody as a chair right now? And you would really like to volunteer to be the chair at the moment. I'm just trying to anticipate that if we, if we actually elect a chair, then we won't have a vice chair and <laughs> we'll go on from there. So, um, can we, can we, can we nominate Al Smith? <laughs> uh, I think he would have to be here to accept, which, which would be interesting, um, yeah. you know, to, to go from, the, from there. That's um, all I got. But um, without any other suggestions, um, I don't know whether we actually need a motion to continue as we are. I, I think if we just leave it, then it will continue. So if anybody has any other suggestions, please speak up. Otherwise we'll move on from that point. Okay. Um, thank you again, everybody. Thank you, Bert, from, you know, calling in. It's a little bit of time difference over there. I, uh, you know, I've, it's, uh, it's good of you to, to take your time out, but thank you to everybody. And uh, once again, a welcome to Natalie. Um, look forward to hearing a nice report from you in the next go around. All right, this this would be good. Yeah. See what you've been up to and what your plans are for the future. My thanks to everybody there uh, for coming in. As I say, it is time. We've got five minutes left. So, but uh, unless anybody has anything else, um, could I see a motion to adjourn, please? Thank you, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. All right, we got there. We go. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next David. time. David. Okay. Thank Bye you. now. Bye. Bye. Bye.